God has grace for you. God is generous toward you. I believe in you. God has good purposes for your life. I believe you will succeed. You are brilliant. I am for you. God loves you. God is for you. Okay, that's it. That's the sermon of the blessing of words. <laughs> Seriously, though, does that not feel good? Does that not feel energizing and strengthening just to hear words spoken that give life? I like to call these life words. What would it be like if we heard words like this every day? What if we spoke words like this every day so that someone else could hear words like this every day? Isn't that what God wants the church to be? The salt and light of the earth. The blessing of words, it sounds very simple. It's just speaking those words. That was pretty simple to do. But for some reason in our day-to-day -day life, speaking words of blessing seems to be difficult. Last week, Chris beautifully opened our series, The Blessing, and uh, covered the three topics we're gonna cover through the series, the blessing of words, material blessings, and the blessing of God keeping his promises. So today we're gonna dig into um, the blessing of words, and because it's simple, it might sound a little bit repetitive and redundant, but that's the beauty of it, is that it's simple and it is able to be repeated. And um, I think our words can give life, and I know they can. Sometimes we focus on the painful, um, harsh, negative words that we receive. In fact, we even uh, teach about the Bible saying how the tongue is evil, and we have to tame the tongue. And those are truths, those are in the Bible. But the Bible also says that our words can be life and can be a blessing. And so today, um, the sermon I get to teach is actually a fun sermon because we're not going to focus on the negative. I worked really hard, which this was hard, believe it or not, to not talk about the negative effect of words while talking about the blessing of words. But today, we have the joy of focusing on the blessing of words. So let me pray for you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that is good. It is all good, and we thank you for that. And I pray that you would open our hearts today to hear from you, in Jesus' name, amen. Last week, Chris told us the ironic blessing. We find it in Numbers 6, 23 through 27, and I just wanna refresh our memory about that. It says, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So the original language that this verse was written in, it was Hebrew, and the Hebrew word for bless is barak, and that means to bring a gift to someone. So when we are speaking words of blessing, words that are life-giving and nourishing and building and encouraging and full of hope, it is like we are bringing a gift of words to someone. And a gift is good, right? And so we have to be careful of the words that we're bringing to a person if we're bringing them a gift. And we have to think about the person that we're talking with, and we have to think about their life situation and what they need to hear, not what we think would sound good or what might make us feel good. We have to think about the other person. That is the gift of words for other people. And there are many examples in the Bible, and I'm gonna try to quickly go through several of these because I think they're, um, really effective at showing us how to bless people with our words. So we're going to start in Philippians 4:19. If you want to turn to that in your device or in your paper copy, we'll also have it for you on the screen. This is Paul saying to the church at Philippi, he says, "My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus." So it's the year of COVID, right? It's a hard year. I know the Chinese calendar says it's the year of the rat. 
but I believe it's gonna go down in history as the year of COVID. And COVID has been hard. It's been hard on several of us um, that have lost employment, that maybe your business has gone under. Uh, you don't know how you're gonna pay your bills. You don't know how you're gonna meet your financial needs. And wouldn't it just feel really crummy if a friend came up to you and you're in that situation and they say, oh yeah, this really sucks. It's so hard, it's so bad. I don't think you're ever gonna get another job. I don't know how you'll pay your bills. Like that would not be life-giving, right? Instead, what if we use Paul's example and say, my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of the glory in Christ Jesus. Would that not plant a seed of hope in their life, even if they're in a difficult situation? And I have to just confess here, when I uh, write out sermons, I'm a little bit of an analytical thinker. And so when I wanna say something, I automatically think of five other things that could be true in that situation. And this is one of them. I'm like, okay, if someone lost their job, I should sit with them and mourn with them. And there is a place to mourn with those who mourn. But then there is also a place to not add negative energy to that mourning. And instead we can add positive energy and life to that situation. So we can sit with them and feel sad with them but then we can also breathe hope and plant seeds of hope. So that's where I settled when I was wrestling in my own mind with that. Um, so the next scripture, Isaiah 41, this is God speaking. God has blessing for us, his children. And this is God speaking to his children. And he says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Whatever the situation is that you're in, or maybe you have a friend who comes to you and um, they're in a situation of having the fear of a medical test result, or maybe they're fearful of a career that's ending, or maybe they're fearful of a relationship that is breaking apart. Instead of having that fear, we can speak, God is with you, he is your God, he will strengthen you. He will help you. He will uphold you. These are words of blessing. What if we knew the word of God so well that we could speak these words in every situation? What if we knew God so well and we knew his character so well that we could breathe these words of blessing into the lives of others? I think we could help shape attitudes and I think we could instill hope. Our next example is in Psalm 20. Listen to this blessing. May God give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Doesn't that feel good? Make all your plans succeed. If you're sharing a dream with someone, you know it takes uh, risk and vulnerability to share like a heart dream or just a desire, an idea with a person. And you know, you don't want someone to say, oh man, that sounds really hard. I think you're gonna hit a lot of obstacles with that. And did you know that that's gonna cause a lot of stress in your marriage? Oh, I don't know, I think you should rethink that dream. That's not what we wanna hear. We wanna hear, may God give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. How life-giving is that? That is how we bless with our words. In light of Christmas season, we're gonna look at Luke chapter one and Mary receives words of blessing from Gabriel. And it says this, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Okay, can you imagine a teenage girl, a virgin, and she's pregnant? She's never had sex and she's pregnant. That alone would instill some kind of fear in your life, right? Chaos, what is going on? But besides that, the archangel Gabriel is standing before her. And when I think of Gabriel the archangel, I think of an angel several stories high, like as high as these ceilings, 
glowing in gold, armored to the teeth like a warrior for Jesus. You know, this is the angel because those are the kind of angels I want protecting me. So that's how I picture them. So that in itself would also like make me quake a little bit. But this is what Gabriel does with his words of blessing. He confirms God's calling on her life by saying, you are highly favored. That means the Lord has chosen you. He's confirming that she is in the right place. And then he reassures her and comforts her and says, the Lord is with you. You know, when you're full of fear and you're not sure what's happening and it's chaotic, the worst thing is to be alone, right? No one wants to be alone or feel alone. So just to say, I am with you. Gabriel tells Mary, the Lord is with you. We can share those words too to our friends. The Lord is also with you. An interesting illustration, I think, is um, talking about blessing someone's career. And that might be stretching it a little bit when you hear the example, but that's how I'm visioning it. In John 2, we're going to read and start in verse 1. It says, On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus said. He probably didn't quite say it like that, right? Because he's Jesus. He's the Son of God. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. He probably said, Woman, why do you involve me? My time has not yet come. He was probably very respectful. But he, his mother then said to the servants, after Jesus says that, my time has not come, his mother says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary uses these words to bless the beginning of her son Jesus's ministry. This was the beginning of Jesus's public ministry. Mary saw the ability in Jesus, right? She knew who he was. She saw ability in him that, of course, he also knew he had. For some reason, he said his time hadn't come, and then he did it anyway. So something shifted in the heavenlies. We're not going to unpack that today. I'll leave that for next week for Pastor Petros or Chris or whoever. Um, but anyway, he changes his mind, and he changes the water to wine. She sees in him ability. What would happen if we saw ability in people and we spoke it out? We said, I see this in you. I believe you can do this. And then it opens up a whole new ministry or a career or a life for someone. Finally, we see Jesus blessing his mother with his words, even while dying on the cross. This is so powerful. Jesus is experiencing the worst kind of suffering ever, humiliation, torture, beatings, dying on a cross. And this is what happens in John 19. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. What I see here is that Jesus, suffering in his worst pain, sees outside of himself and sees the pain of other people, his mother and one of his dearest friends, and he comforts them by showing them a plan of how to be um, comforted from each other, to care for each other, to love each other. How awesome would it be? And this one really challenges me because when I'm suffering and I'm in a hard place, which I've never experienced anything like what Jesus did, but it's really hard to think about what other people might need. But even in our suffering, Jesus shows us the example to be a blessing to others with our words. All right, those are some awesome examples from the Word. We love the Word of God. Now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about science. So you know, without God's creation, there would be no science, for science is this. It's the study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world. And who created the physical and natural world? But God himself, right? And we are also God's creation. He created us. And did you know that God designed our brains to respond 
to words of blessing. There are physical effects of positive words on the brain. So hang on for a minute. There is a neurotransmitter in our brain called dopamine that is released by the amygdala in the temporal lobe of our brain when we are experiencing something that makes us feel good, like life words. Now, all of you physicians and neuroscientists out there, if I get any of this wrong, you can email corrections to chris at peopleschurch.co. But just go with me for now, and we're talking about our brain. God created our brains to experience the release of dopamine, these neurons, because he created us to have joy, to have pleasure, and to have life. That's like a capital L life, eternal life and life to the full here on earth. One way we can have this experience in a healthy way is through affirming and life-giving words. Now I'm going to also take another small detour here, but stay with me because we're going to get back to the life words. As we are approaching these short, gray, dreary days of winter, some of us have and will experience seasonal depression. Well, I found this chart last winter that has really, really helped me, and I just want to share it with you today because I think it's helpful. It's called Happiness Chemicals and How to Hack Them. And this is really fun. Um, this is from Dr. Caroline Leaf, who is a communication pathologist and cognitive neuroscientist with a PhD in communication pathology. Now, I really respect Dr. Leaf, not just because of her fancy title and degrees, but um, I've, I've received a lot from her. She is an awesome teacher. You can look her up online. Um, she just has incredible things to say about the human person and how our brains and minds work. But you'll see in the chart, these are four different happiness chemicals that are released in your brain, which create feelings of joy during specific activities. Um, I find it helpful on a dreary, sad day to consider one of these healthy activities to help boost my mood and my feelings. Um, I'm just going to share some of my favorites are eating dark chocolate, which you can see with that, I uh, receive endorphins. I also love completing a task, so then the dopamine kicks in for me. And I love walking outside, either all alone or with my lovely husband. Um, and if it's sunny, you get vitamin D also, so that's a double. You get serotonin and vitamin D. And then my very favorite on this list is petting a dog. And I am so grateful that my daughter and son-in-law moved their dog into our home this year. And so anytime I want, I can get oxytocin released in my system by petting this dog. So we know that dopamine is released when we hear positive, life-giving words, or as we can see in the chart, dopamine is in the reward quadrant because life words are like a reward. It's the gift of words that we bring to someone. So we can help someone experience that. But also what I realized in this chart is that I think we also experience joy and life when we give life words. Because if you look in the upper right quadrant, it says we experience oxytocin when giving a compliment. And in my thinking, giving a compliment is very similar as giving life words to a person. In fact, Proverbs eleven seventeen says, your own soul is nourished when you are kind. Your own soul is nourished. So not only are you helping someone else, you also are nourishing yourself. John 10, 9 and 10 says this. Jesus is saying, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The message translation says, I came so they have real and eternal life, more and better life than they could ever dream of. God's desire is for us to have a full life, a life better than anything that we could imagine. What if we gave this gift of life to other people? What if we, the church of Jesus, brought life not just life words, but the life of Jesus in our words into the hearts of others by speaking words of blessing. What might the world be like if we saw the good in other people 
and we called it out. We believed for them the things that they didn't even know were inside of them. I believe we could change the world one life at a time. I believe words have power. Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Life is in the power of the tongue. I believe our words have the power to create opportunities. When Chris and I were young 20-somethings, we had just uh, come back to the States from a year in Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, now Croatia, and we were headed into grad school. And we were so dirt poor that uh, we were going to take turns doing grad school, and one of us would work full-time while the other went to school full-time, and then we'd switch. And so it was going to probably be like a four-year stint, right? Um, after, I wanted Chris to go first in schooling, so he did that. I worked at the law school. It was awesome. But after two years in Virginia Beach, I was just ready to settle down. I think we had moved like five times in the first three years of our marriage, got married in school and an internship and overseas in Virginia. I was just like ready to be somewhere and like start life, which is such a lie, right? Life starts when you're born and life is always happening. We should never wait for the next thing because we think life's then gonna begin. Life is, was beginning, but I was just ready to settle down. And so Chris was like, no, but you need to go to grad school. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it later. I, I still wanna do it. I'm definitely gonna do it. I'll do it later. And throughout the years, you know, we had babies and life and career and Chris would bring it up and I would think about it. And then, I don't know, it was like 2013, we started talking about it again. And he's like, you know, what are you thinking? I was like, I think I want to study counseling. I think that could be so helpful in ministry if I had more tools and knowledge and um, professional information about how to counsel people. And so he so supported me. He's like, yes, let's look into that. We went, he went to UC with me. We met with a professor. We went to Xavier. Nothing was opening up for counseling. And I just was sure that's what I would love. I did a psych minor. I thought it was interesting. Um, but then out of the blue to me, Chris said to me, I think you should look at Fuller Seminary online. I, they're amazing with international studies, and that was my undergrad. He's like, I think you would love it. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. And so I one day opened up my computer, and the front page of the Fuller Seminary website had this newer degree they were advertising, and it was called Global Leadership. And I started reading about, I had no idea what that meant, but I started reading about what it was, who it's targeting, what it fulfills. And I just came alive inside. And I knew, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And it was because Chris said, go look at Fuller Seminary. See, you know, that had to have been the Holy Spirit because I know he's a praying man and listens to the Spirit. And this picture shows you what the final blessing of that created opportunity was that I did get my degree, which was a huge blessing to me. And I'll forever be grateful for that opportunity that Chris created for me. I believe words have the power to create opportunities. I also believe our words have power to heal and bring healing and health. Words like, I'm sorry. Words like, I forgive you. And even just speaking health and strength to people the way John does in 3 John chapter 1, he says to his good friend Gaius, Dear friend, I pray you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Let's speak words of health and life. I also believe our words can give hope. In 2 Corinthians 9, Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth. And he says, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Paul is seeing a good future for the church in Corinth, and he is speaking it to them. He is giving them hope. And finally, I believe our words can give life. I'd like for us to listen to a moment to Dr. Caroline Leaf. And she explains the way our brain functions while having healthy thoughts. So let's listen to this. 
this is a slice through your brain. The girls saw this this weekend. So this is a slice inside of your brain going through set up by, this has been done by scientists, top scientists in this field, this particular slide. Now going inside of your brain, these, those are nerve cells. When I say you think, you choose, and you build thoughts, those are thoughts. What you're seeing up there are your thoughts. These thought networks inside of your brain. And you see those things that are growing? As you thinking and choosing, that's what you are doing in your brain. When, when Pastor Jimmy teaches you that you can change your mind, you are changing those things that you see up on the screen. You can change that firing that you see. That is your thinking in action. That's what it looks like inside of the brain. You can grow branches, take away branches, add on branches, redesign branches. That is your creative love power ability. Now, you are designed for, you are wired for love. That's what scientists, how the scientists describe it. And what that means is that all the stuff that happens inside of this is designed in a positive direction. Those, those are your chromosomes. Now you, with your thinking, you influence the chromosomes. The chromosomes break down into DNA. There's DNA. You've seen a strand of DNA. On the DNA is the genetic code. And you, with your thinking, you influence the, the DNA to actually switch on. And when the DNA switches on, you make proteins. You are doing this at 400 billion actions per second. Aren't you brilliant? Isn't that amazing? Don't you admire God? And you, you cause this. This is what God has given you, love, power, and a sound mind. Now, all of this-, this is what God has given you, love, power, and a sound mind. This is what God desires for us. And this is what life words do for us. They create positive experiences in our brain. Healthy thoughts produce healthy emotions, and healthy emotions produce healthy actions. Healthy thoughts produce healthy emotions, and healthy emotions create healthy actions. And how do we have healthy thoughts? Well, one way is by listening to life words, and life words are found in the Word of God, so every day we need to be in the Word of God. Life words are found um, from the Holy Spirit who resides inside of us. If you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit is in you to remind you of the good life words of Jesus. And if you are not yet in Jesus, he's calling you. He is asking you to come and be his child. He desires that for you. He wants his Holy Spirit to be inside of you, to give you life and energy and strength. Another way God gives life words into our brain to create healthy thoughts is through people, and that's what we've been talking about today, that we are here on earth to give life words to each other. How might the world experience Jesus, the giver of life, if we would choose to encourage, to build up, to bless, to speak words of life rather than words of death? What if we did this across differences? What if we intentionally shared life words across difference, across people that look differently, whether it's old to young or young to old, whether it's white to black to brown, back to white? I believe that words across difference would create new experiences for people and possibly even a first time experience for that person. And if we create new pathways in the brain for people, I believe we could experience life for people and that they would experience life in a new way. I think it would be powerful. I think it could flip our city. I think it could change brains and it would change lives. So in closing, I just want to share a couple more scriptures that tell us how to bless with our words. In Colossians 4, it says, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. When we think about our words, are we seasoning them with grace? I need to work on that. I need to have more grace in my words. Words are so powerful. Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Listen to those words, helpful, building, benefit, their needs. This is how we bless with our words. Proverbs 15.4 says, The soothing tongue 
is a tree of life. I love this. If you listen more to the um, video that Dr. Caroline Leaf played, she talks also about what toxic thoughts do in your brain. But the video that you got to see about healthy thinking, they sometimes refer to all those pathways like trees and that you can grow new branches when new positive things are happening. It grows your tree bigger and larger. So I was reading this verse in Proverbs, and I'm like, well, wouldn't God know what that looks like because he designed that? And he says, soothing, a soothing tongue is a tree of life. Maybe he's even talking about that stuff in our brains that looks like trees. I don't know. That's just where my brain goes. So anyway, these are some practical ways that we can speak words of life. This week, let's think about ways that, um, especially during COVID, we need life spoken. Some people are very isolated. Uh, we, let's get creative in our giving of life words. Let's uh, pull out an old, you know, binder of paper, paper and pen. We remember what that is. Let's write a letter to someone. Let's send a card. We can also send a text of encouragement. We can send life words through an email. We could also pick up the phone. Some people are living all alone during COVID because they're elderly or they're susceptible and they don't get to see people or hear voices from people. What if we just pick up the phone and have a warm voice-to-voice -voice phone call and share life words? Let me pray for us today. Father, I do thank you that your words give life. Your words bless. Your words give life to the lost. And God, we are your church. And I ask right now that you would help us know how to use our words to bring life. Lord, to bring your blessing, to bring your hope for a good future that you have for all of us. Lord, let us be your church. Let us be the salt and light that you've designed us to be. Help us, Lord, to use our words this week, but forever in our lives. May we always remember the power of our words to give life. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now